Welcome back to The Breakfast. And now for a little bit of history, we're going back to the year 2018. Uh, not a lot of people know this, um, you know, apparently, but there's something called the National Identity Day. And, you know, on this day in 2018, the Nigerian government adopted the 16th of September to be known as uh, National Identity Day. Um, it was uh, slated for this day for, you know, mostly to promote the Nigerian identity and, uh, you know, to promote the registration of birth also. It's a conversation that a lot of people have not had. And, of course, uh, with regards to um, um, Millennium Development Goals, um, or sustainable development goes, I beg your pardon, which calls for legal identity for all, including birth registration by 2030. The federal government approved the recognition and observance of September 16th every year as a National Identity Day. A statement by the general manager of NIMC back then, Abdul Hamid Umar, said the action is a practical move to create awareness on the importance of identification as a modern tool for national development and social cohesion. Nigeria became the first country in the world to formally adopt this day, otherwise called 16.9 as Identity Day. It was initiated at the fourth annual meeting of the ID for Africa movement on 24th of April 2018 in Abuja um, as a global coalition calling for the recognition by the United Nations. And once again, the purpose of the day is to raise awareness about the important role in uh, identity plays in empowering individuals to exercise their rights and responsibilities fairly and equitably in a modern society. Um, and I remember also that there was um, a, a rush at that time you know, to go get a national ID card um, and um, all that. Um, I think we're still building up those numbers. Uh, it will take a while before every Nigerian gets completely registered. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a good, it's a step in the right direction, I believe. Yeah, I, I believe it is. And in this age, I believe everyone should have a means of identity. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we've talked about um, how it is in the other countries. You know, once a child is born, all this registration is done. Once you immigrate into a country, at the port of entry, you're getting all those documentation done. But it seems different in Nigeria. When we look back at our parents and our grandparents, how many of them really know their birthdays, the day they were born or the year they were born? Because that system of national identity you know, was not such a strong conversation then. And this is really important, but it's a good thing that, you know, it's times are changing. We have so many, there's a national identity, identity card, there's the NIN, so many means of identification. And I, I believe that we can only get better as, you know, we begin to expand our data pool in the country. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I think it, it, you know, really focuses on, uh, you know, the government's need to know what its population is and know the amount of people that it's planning for. You know, there's um, things called social security, security number in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a conversation, you know, it's, it's, it's important, you know, for every single Nigerian, not just to have a means of identification, but to have a national ID card. Um, so that you you know are fully registered and fully recognized by and can, the and can enjoy all the benefits for, well, of well, the state. You know, enjoy all of it, but you know, um, <laughs> have a national ID card and bet registration also. Um, I remember there was a campaign run by one of the international NGOs a few years ago um, on birth registration. Um, the importance of getting parents to understand that every child that is born must be registered. Um, pe people, you know, who give birth in rural areas, a lot of them don't bother with birth registration. They just give birth and go home. Um, so those are part of the important, you know, aspects here and there concerning that. Mm. And on this day in history, um, just quickly, um, on the back of that, if you haven't you registered for the United Identity Number, you definitely should get on that train today. I mean, it's becoming compulsory for everything for your jam, for your WIAC examination, to get a um, driver's license is becoming very important. So on this day, um, the day that Nigeria has adopted um, September 16 as its National ID, ID Day, Identity Day, um, you should get a national identity if you haven't. And moving on, uh, on this day in history, uh, September 16, 1932, the famous Indian leader, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, began a protest fast at the hunger strike while in prison. I mean, this story is so remarkable because the person, Mahatma Gandhi, you know, was loved, you know, very loved, revered in the Indian community. And he, he, his own way of resisting the British rule and colonization in their country was not 
protest like we know it. It was not agitation, it was not violence. He, he was a very peaceful man. He had a practice of satyagraha, uh, I believe I pronounced that correctly, in India, where he just does the practice of civil disobedience. He would go on hunger fast, he would go on long walks, you know, and, and people might wonder, why do you feel that someone going on a hunger fast or a hunger strike? you know, has any impact, you know, because the people, you know, really love and respect Mahatma Gandhi and they know that he is going on and on backing on a hunger fast because of certain policies that the British government is trying to impose on India. You know, people then put pressure on the Indian government, on the British government to say, you need to reverse his policies because we love Mahatma Gandhi. We don't want him to continue this fast to jeopardize his health, you know, make him get out of this fast mood by reversing this policy. So it actually worked, this process of civil disobedience that he you know, basically propagated in India at that time. So this hunger strike, he began it in 1932 while in prison. And uh, he, of course, he was jailed again. Um, when he, he, he was released from prison, then he began another hunger strike. He was jailed again. And uh, he, the, the reason why he was protesting was a policy by the British government to unfairly uh, divide social classes in India. You know, he was saying that when these new policies come in place, it would, get, it would give so much class and... Um, you know, people who are the poorest in India would be cited in a particular location. They would get little to no social benefits and all of that. He really was against that. And that's why he began this hunger strike on this day in history, uh, September 16th. The uh, British um, tried to segregate, you know, based on class uh, in India back then in 1930. I think the, the law at that time was to... Um, you know, like you had mentioned, you know, separate people based on class and give uh, the lowest class of people their own political representation. And Mahatma Gandhi felt that what, that was going to be, um, it was going to be difficult because the British had planned to do that for 70 years. And so he had, you know, seen that that was going to be difficult to overturn over after, you know, that 70 year period. And it was basically going to divide India's population and, you know, make them, you know, unequal based on class and that's the reason he went on a hunger strike it, it lasted for six days and then it was um uh, it was overturned um uh, another thing you know he, he he really was you know like you had mentioned someone who believed in civil disobedience as his method of protesting um he had run a campaign uh, to get india to rule themselves you know to be in, independent of uh, british rule uh, for many years and his first time he was jailed it was in 1920 uh, 1922, sorry, to 1924, and then it was released and then jailed again in 1930 and then jailed again in 1932 uh, for pretty much the same thing. And he continued this civil dis disobedience hunger strikes uh, many, many um, uh, times, which always was effective. I think the last one was in 1948 um, when he was trying to you know, encourage more peace between yeah. Hebrews and Muslims back then in India. Um, so it was his way of protesting. Um, that worked mostly because of the love that the Indian people had for mm -hmm. him and how much you know he, he was respected across the whole of India. So it did work. Mm. Um, and it's, it's sad that you know that same 1948, after he broke that fast, about two weeks after he broke that fast, he was sadly assassinated by mm. Hindu extremists. Such a wow. terrible way. Um, but I, I, I'm not sure if hunger strikes will work here in Nigeria. Um, the, the question is, people would ask you, oh, you have food that you choose not to eat in, a, in an economy that is grappling under the weight of inflation, like we're going to discuss very soon. Yeah, a lot of people you are know. already living through hunger strikes, um, forced hunger strikes, uh, <laughs> you know, but with the government, even outside, if you no, decide we'll to not eat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about Nigeria's inflation. Um, the government has reported that it has continued to uh, drop. Um, five consecutive times now. We're talking about that with an economist after the short break here on The Breakfast. Good morning once again.